Back in September, China's most powerful regulators intensified a crackdown on cryptocurrencies with a blanket ban on all crypto transactions and mining and hitting Bitcoin and other major coins and pressurizing crypto and blockchain related stocks. But many miners have figured out ways to continue operations and evade detection. Experts estimate that as much as 20 percent of the worldwide Bitcoin network remains in China. We thought we'd take you back to a conversation I had with Henry Aslanian, who's a crypto leader at PwC in Hong Kong, about the events that led to this. Crypto markets never sleep. And really uh, what happened was last Friday uh, afternoon, the Chinese government put out a statement. Uh, we really made three things very, very clear. First was that virtual currencies are not legal currencies in the country and that all cryptocurrency transactions are illegal. Second thing it did, it actually, uh, in addition to basically banning it within the country, said that any crypto exchange that is overseas, that is providing uh, services to uh, residents uh, of mainland China is conducting illegal activity. And number three, uh, basically this was the first time where it was a coordinated effort where you had 10 government agencies in this one notice, including the central bank, that really stated that they're going to share information, collaborate, and actually work together for enforcement. So while there's been a lot of similar enforcements over the last couple of years, this was by far the most strict and the one where there is no ambiguity that crypto transactions are not welcomed in China anymore. Yeah. From the conversations you having with, uh, you know, your colleagues and others in the industry, I mean, what are they reading into it? Can it work in practice? Well, it's a very good question because actually uh, uh, crypto has been banned in China for many years. For example, in 2017, uh, ICOs were banned and de facto a lot of the cryptocurrency exchanges that were at a time in China already left the country. And afterwards, even as, as, as early as this summer, uh, there was many announcements, not only binding, uh, banning Bitcoin mining, for example, but also uh, the central bank telling banks not to deal anymore with crypto companies. Now, the big question is, can this work? Uh, the reality is that uh, although as much as governments may, may want, banning Bitcoin or banning people from the ownership of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is de facto impossible. For example, like, let's take this Chinese, the, the case of what's happening right now in China. Nothing stops, for example, from a Chinese resident receiving Bitcoin from a friend who's overseas. Nothing stops a Chinese resident from going to Hong Kong or somewhere else where they can buy Bitcoin put on their digital wallet and simply come back. And, and frankly, uh, the, probably the most uh, importantly, it's, it's pretty much impossible to stop what we call decentralized exchanges, or what we often commonly known as DeFi, decentralized finance, which basically are exchanges that you're able to, tr to trade uh, any pretty much cryptocurrencies uh, without any centralized intermediary, uh, which basically, uh, as, as, long, as long as you have a digital wallet and you have some crypto, you can continue trading easily with a VPN. So I think this is why, while these rules will deter a lot of people, if anybody, like any uh, like, like other activities, really wants to do something, even though it's illegal, they are still, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, still ways of doing it. Right. What have you seen in terms of uh, the crypto price movement since the announcement? Yeah, actually, when the announcement came out, there was actually a dip in the markets. But since then, markets have recovered. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them, I think for anybody who's in the crypto space, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, the, the de facto understanding was that crypto was already banned in China. So this just clarified what was the common understanding already. Uh, second as well, I think it's very important to understand is that Yes, China is a big player in the global crypto space, but really Bitcoin and crypto is a really global activity. Uh, so yes, although it may have a temporary impact, uh, you know, the, the crypto ecosystem is continuing its evolution, its maturity. Uh, and while this may cause a short-term blip, uh, markets should recover it as they have already recovered since last Friday. Yeah. I mean, perhaps you can give us a little bit of history here. I mean, what is it that, uh, you know, as it relates to cryptocurrencies that makes Chinese regulators uncomfortable? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, what's interesting is obviously Bitcoin is a decentralized cryptocurrency. So first, nobody can stop it. Nobody can really control it. Uh, and the price is really determined by offer and demand, like other commodities. Uh, what's interesting here is obviously China is a country with capital controls. And uh, of course, it's having capital controls is a bit uh, pointless 
if you could simply buy Bitcoin and send the Bitcoin away and basically just bypass capital controls. And this is obviously, and of course, there's other concerns that the uh, central bank and PBOC and Chinese regulators have had uh, for a long time. Uh, for example, money laundering concerns, KYC concerns, and the regular concerns that other policymakers have had. What is, I think, very important to understand here is that unlike many other countries, uh, China has been very early on when it comes to a central bank digital currency, which is a digital currency issued by the central bank, commonly known as a CBDC. I mean, to put things in perspective, the PBOC, the People Bank of China, has been looking at the topic since 2014, has set up an institute on the topic in 2000, uh, uh, 2017, and has been experimenting on it since. So they really, uh, China, when it comes to really, when you compare it to other advanced economies, uh, China is really years ahead of many other countries. To put things in perspective, Nastasia, uh, really uh, in uh, the last couple of months, there's been over 5 billion US dollars of value of CBDC that has been piloted so far. Uh, there's been over 1.3 million use cases. And there's been over 20 million wallets that have been used. And this is only the last couple of months and only the pilot stage. And let's not forget the big catalyst, the Olympics start in China on February 4th to 2022, which is literally six months from now. And many believe that the uh, ECNY, as the Chinese CBDC is called, will be live by then for the athletes in the world to experiment and to see. Oh, wow. Um, is there anything that remains uh, unanswered for you in terms of questions about, uh, you know, since the announcement on Friday? Absolutely. I think the big question is, I think the reality, many uh, knew about the situation in China. There's really two things that I'm watching right now. Uh, one of them is obviously, are some of the international exchanges uh, that are regulated, that are centralized, uh, that tend to be more, let's say, best in class, are they going to start uh, stopping to accept Chinese residents as clients? Ironically, today, many U.S. persons, U.S. clients are not able to trade on some of the big international crypto exchanges. And it'd be, it'd be interesting to watch if the Chinese crypto users become the new U.S. crypto users as they don't have access to many of the platforms. Uh, second thing that I'm watching as well is uh, what's going to happen with many of the exchanges and uh, crypto companies that generally have some of their R&D their tech and their operations in mainland China, and they may not actually serve as Chinese clients. What's going to happen with those companies? Are they going to look at relocating some of their operations, the technical or back office staff? Those are some of the questions that I'm, I'm watching. And probably the last thing is actually who's, doing, who's going to more broadly benefit from this? A uh, case in point, uh, when last summer China banned Bitcoin mining, all that mining, mining activity, let's not forget China was home to about 65% of global crypto mining, moved to other countries, including Kazakhstan and Russia, but mainly the United States of America, the US, a lot of it moved to the US. And actually the US may become the biggest Bitcoin miner in the next couple of months. It'll be very interesting to watch now if based on some of this disruption in, in, in China, if really the US reinforces its position as one of the leading uh, crypto centers, uh, countries around the world. So very interesting developments to watch. I think the crypto space moves very fast. And I think with these developments that popped in, uh, it's going to be very interesting the next couple of weeks and months to watch.